The length of a torsion spring is often a key sticking point when figuring out how it will fit into an assembly. The initial calculation before any load is placed on the spring is as follows. L equals D times NA plus 1, where L is spring length, D is the wire diameter, and NA is the number of active coils. We'll go over active coils later in this video. When one of the spring arms is loaded or rotated in line with the direction that the coils were formed during manufacture, the length increases. The image here shows why. The spring arm has rotated 720 degrees. This is two full rotations, adding two coils under load, which has a knock-on effect on the overall length. The length calculation therefore becomes L equals D times NA plus 1 plus the number of additional rotations, where theta is the number of additional rotations. The main reason for considering the expanding free length of the spring is so it will not be restricted from delivering the required torque by the surrounding assembly geometry. A small amount of rotation will not affect the length much, but as we rotate to 90 degrees, to 180 degrees, a full 360 degrees, and beyond, the spring continues to grow. It must be said, if you rotate in the other direction, the opposite will occur. But unravelling the coils from free state will lead to a more erratic torque output and is not advised as the stresses are unfavourable. There will be a little bit more on this later. It's not just the free length that changes under load. While the length increases, the coil diameter also decreases. Let's assume we know the original coil mean diameter before any load is applied. The mean diameter under load is D1 times NB over NB plus additional coil rotations, where D is the mean diameter under load, D1 is the mean diameter at free length, which we've assumed we know, NB is the number of coil body turns and theta the number of additional rotations. The external coil diameter can be found by adding the wire diameter to the equation, where DO is the outer coil diameter. The internal diameter is therefore found by deducting the wire diameter, where DI is the internal coil diameter. We mentioned earlier, from free state, the spring arm should not be rotated in the direction that reduces the coil count. Although this will increase the coil diameter and decrease the length, it is not very efficient. This is because during manufacture, the spring wire was plastically deformed or stressed in the direction of coiling. This produces beneficial residual stresses. Winding in the opposite direction means there is no residual benefit, and so the torque output is reduced or at least obstructed by the conflict. The changing coil diameter needs to be considered when designing rod or tube assembly support. The coil contraction under load means that any rod clearance must be based on the maximum loading position to maintain clearance. The rod support aids alignment. Whereas, if the spring was 
rotated in the opposite direction, the expanding coils would bring the spring off center. This would also contribute to less efficient torque output. Fortunately, we can use a previously discussed equation to find the optimum rod support. Rod diameter is less than the internal coil diameter at the maximum loaded position. So D rod is less than DI equals D1 times MB over NB plus theta minus D. And just to recap, the symbols are shown on screen. Any tube support must be in clearance to the outer diameter. And if we're only rotating in line with the coils, then D tube is greater than DO equals D1 times NB over NB plus theta plus D. There's been some discussion in this video on active and body turns. This is all based on contribution to the overall length from the coil body and the rotating arms. Let's start with the contribution from the ends. NE equals L1 plus L2 over 3 times pi times D. NE is the contribution from the arms, L1 is the length of arm 1, and L2 is the length of arm 2. NA is usually known. I say this because it's a key input when designing the spring. It can be used to find MB if needed. NA equals MB plus NE. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to go over in this video is the coil diameter tolerance. This can be calculated when working to some design standards. The calculation is DTOL equals 1000 plus C plus 20 times D plus 8 over 10,000, where DTOL is the coil diameter tolerance. D is the mean coil diameter and C is the spring index.